Yeah. Dang, dude. <laughs> Warm up them hands, let's get this going, dudes! We'll just double check that we're up. I think we're up. Hello, everyone. Uh, today is uh, the 12th of July, 2021. It is a Monday. I think it's been Monday every single time I've streamed on a Monday. I'm fairly certain. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, my name's Vanda. You may know me from the last stream. Uh, I've got some topics for today but honestly it's gonna be a pretty chill just we'll go by the books kind of game day so let's jump over to the game <laughs> easy enough uh so on the end of the last stream i believe what happened was that i um went through the all the first gym went through the route went through the tunnel slow pokes I'm out the other side, we're in Iggy Azalea Town, and here in Iggy Azalea Town, uh, we find out that I may be underleveled, but I'm not too sure. We're gonna be at the mercy of, uh, things that are not grass type, but definitely... I would love to have Babat knowing a flying type attack, but I don't think he's going to be able to, so best I can do is just spam bite. But I kind of want Babat to be a bit higher level. Uh, move is not what I want. That's the list of moves. I actually just want him to be up the front. So, yeah. So how's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great uh, start of the week, and I hope you had a great week uh, before that. Here we start off with not a double battle, by the way. Uh... <laughs> There's two trainers sitting next to each other, and it does indeed count as a single trainer fight, yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> it's not a double battle, it's just it's just the battle, so... I've got my age-old strat of using Bite and hoping for the best, but that should get Babat up a fair bit. He's gotta get up to level 20 somehow, so... This is the best way of doing it. 20? 20? 22, actually, sorry. But, yeah. Oh yeah, I've had a pretty, uh, quiet or so week. Not really much has happened, um, in the realm of, uh, the, uh, the ongoing copyright saga of this third week now. Uh, there's been no news, really, so, uh, as I said, I submitted the, the counter, whatever, um, not last Thursday, but the Thursday before, uh, Sony Music has 10 working days, so basically two weeks to respond, and, uh, I mean, I got the email on the 1st of July, um, at 1pm my time, so when the 15th of July comes around at 1pm, uh, which will be on Thursday, uh, we'll see, but, uh, one thing I didn't realize is that, um, Chucka Conroy's videos actually got back up, he apparently managed to get one of his videos back up, others went down, and then he talked to the completionist, and, uh, he hooked him up with a guy who got them all back up. Uh, I unfortunately don't have the privilege of, uh, having a contact directly in whoever can sort this stuff out, but considering that the precedence of, uh, someone definitely getting it sorted out has happened, you know, honestly, I think the expected outcome is we're not going to hear about it. And, you know, that's most likely it. So, if you're watching this on the VOD, or if you're watching this now, uh, tune into my channel, um, probably in about three days' time, you'll see, uh, that Earthbound stream just magically show up again. Uh, probably. I'm, I'm going to say probably that's what's going to happen. Um, either that or I actually do get taken to court. That'll be good fun. But, eh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, that's all I gotta say about that, honestly. Um... <laughs> there's not much to say. Uh, when, when it's ongoing, and when you're out of that initial, like, you know, explain your case kind of stage, there's not really much that can happen. So here's a Pokemon, Paris. Uh, Paris is gonna probably be a bit of a jerk to me. What do I have that's actually, like, a bit more okay? Because this is... Sorry, this is the one grass type. I think I'm gonna switch out of Fluffer. Chicky can 100% like sit here. Uh, Fluffer can probably do okay. It's just Scratch. It's nothing really too weird. Thundershock's gonna be half damage, which is gonna be a bit of a problem. So I'm gonna stick with Growl. Sorry, I should. Mm, I should have used Growl actually, considering he's spamming Scratch all the time. 
because then that allows me to switch out. Ooh. I, he, he's got his, his fail safe there, though. If I can't do damage in one go, I can do it in two goes. Or as many goes. Um, we'll just keep using tackles, see how it goes. But hopefully, scratches do much less damage. I don't think I've got this on my own. Especially with Sunspore. I love how, um, Paralysis is a combination of, uh, electricity and, like, bug, or grass, or something. Like, you can use Stun Spore, and that's a grass-type attack, but then you've also got, like, Thunder Wave, and that's, oh, that's just so close. Uh, I think I could probably switch back to Babat, and, and do the, the coup de gras. Cutting it by using Leech Life. I mean, he's on one health. I should have. Maybe I should have been using Leech Life this whole time. Oh well. That's okay. Well, Fluff is gaining levels, and that's always a good sign. <laughs> so yeah, I I find this um, and I guess just a general point about this game is the uh, um, like gym designs and the puzzles in the gyms. There's always been an element of puzzles in the gym since, uh, you know, since the first game, since the the electric gym with Lieutenant Surge having the, um, the dumb switch in the bin kind of puzzle. Uh, this game kind of eases off it a little bit. There's still puzzles in some of the gyms, but here's a gym that's literally, you gotta walk around. There's nothing really to it. Just walk around the top, and then you're good. You have to fight at least three of the trainers, because you've got these two face, you know, the twins at the front. Then you've got one person on either side and one person looking at the small entrance you gotta go in. So, you got that, but... It's just kind of interesting, I guess, like, playing, um... I guess this game with that historical lens, because there's some Pokemon games that absolutely cake in the puzzle. And if anything, I really loved um, Sun and Moon for being more about the puzzle and less about, like, the the end trainer. There's a handful... There was, like, one weird one in Sword and Shield. There was, like, a bowling one. Really early on in the game. It was very odd. Um, I guess that's something that's just... Yeah, it's an interesting one about Pokemon because it's like, Pokemon doesn't really have, um, dungeons in the same, like, vein as other RPGs. It's instead got these gyms to act as the the puzzle boss sections, although it still does have regular caves with regular bosses in the caves, um, sometimes. Um, the Slowpoke, well, almost, it didn't really have a boss at the end, but you could maybe consider it to be a dungeon. I guess that's one thing that sets Pokemon aside from many other RPGs, though, is the fact that it plays with the structure of everything a bit. You're still collecting the eight mythical things, except they're nowhere near as mythical as they could be. You know, they're, they're just badges. You, you use them and someone lets you into a room. There's nothing really to it. Um, you got that, but honestly, like, you know, it, it, Pokemon has been very good at escaping, like, obnoxiously long maze-like dungeons with no end in sight. It's got some long dungeons, and I think this game will definitely have a few of them. It's nowhere near as bad as the first game, though. Third gen, Ruby Sapphire, I can remember, like a handful of caves that are just like, oh, they're horrendously long, but I think this one's generally okay, actually. I don't know, what do you guys think about, like, long dungeons and especially stuff in the Pokemon franchise? Because, so yeah, I find, also, love the, 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 uh, the Weedle, Kakuna, Beedrill trainer. They're almost the right levels as well. The Weedle is level 7. He could have evolved, but... And he's got Furry Attack. I know it's Fury Attack, I just like saying Furry Attack. You gotta watch out for the furries. But the lyrics are coming at him at supersonic speed, so... Ah. 
But yeah, no, uh, rather chill week for me. Um, I've had one mildly disappointing uh, thing in my world, and that's uh, I bought a mouse in February, and the mouse left click had been double clicking. And I thought it was just me clicking a bit weirdly, but no, it definitely is the mouse double clicking after a while. You get like a tester, your time between your clicks, and you go, hmm, I'm pretty sure I can't click 30 times a second. So, we'll go with that. Um, bit of a weird behavior on the clicks. It was like every... <laughs> like, it, it seems a bit arbitrary, but it's like every hundredth or fiftieth click. So like 2% of the time, uh, the click would register another click when I released it. And usually I click pretty rhythmically, so if I was like clicking, um, and, and I would always say, I test this to a beat, is like put a metronome on, set it to 150 BPM, and now if you click along to that, you should expect to see a mouth click every 0.4 seconds. Uh, and so what I ended up seeing was a lot of times when I would click twice at 0.2 seconds, um, roughly around there, and it was a bit bizarre. I wouldn't imagine I'd be one to, I guess, like, release my mouse at the same rate as me clicking it, but there it is, so... Yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. Um, fortunately, I've got a backup mouse. Unfortunately, the backup mouse is an out-of-warranty identical mouse that doesn't middle-click and sometimes scrolls backwards when I'm scrolling. Uh, I must really abuse my mice if they break like that. I definitely play a lot of games, but I play a lot of controller stuff and I went through a lot of Logitech uh, F710s. But, you know what? I've gone through one singular X... Oh, no, I... No, I had... I definitely had another Xbox One controller and I broke the trigger on it. Uh, this one... The, there's a turbo button on the trigger. I should probably watch out for that one. Uh, whoops. Um, so, anyway, let's talk about Gym Leader. So, Gym Leader, uh, this is Bugsy. Bugsy's a boy, apparently. That's, that's classic. Let's play meme. Uh, we can bite, and uh, other than that, it's a metapod. He's just going to be a bulky boy, but there's nothing really too rough about him. And if anything, there's nothing too rough about uh, this gym as well when it comes to types, unless you're something weak to bug. In which case, yeah, you got something to worry about. But generally, like, you know, this is a metapod. You can just kind of take out the metapod, and the metapod can't do too much to you. That's okay. Uh, Bugsy also has Kakuna. Uh, Kakuna... It is bug poison, so you don't get that, like, safeguard there. Uh, and, but other than that, same moves, just uh, poison sing instead of tackle. Which, in Babat's case, is actually way better. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna be spamming bite a bit. He could, he could use harden, but I don't think he's gonna save enough time. Um... Now, of course, every gym leader always has that one signature Pokemon that has a signature move that will absolutely screw you over, and of course, we haven't seen it yet. So, let's introduce the big contender of the battle. Bugsy has a Scyther here, and Scyther... Uh, there's a fun sprite coming at you, but let's, let's hit him with the Super Sonic. Now, he's got Fury Cutter, or Furry Cutter. This attack is absolutely gnarly if I didn't have Super Sonic. So what it does is that it does like a pitiful amount of damage. It's actually lower in this game than it was, that, than it is in later games, I believe. They buffed it in later games. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. So what it does is that it's only got a power of 10, but, which is pitiful, because Bite is like 55, I think, Tackle's 35, it's like 10 is really low. But uh, every time you use it in succession, it will double in power up to 160. So if you switch out, you use an item, you miss, you whatever, it'll reset. Um, but if you manage to hit uh, six, no, five times, 160 is an absolutely killer amount of damage. Uh, Supersonic here is going to buy me the ability to break that about half the time. Or you could just use Quick Attack. That's the other thing with Scyther. He's strong anyways. Um... Maybe he just decided that it wasn't worth doing, so... I'm hoping the Supersonic can work, but I don't really expect it to work that long. I also preemptively spammed the Supersonic there, but... Well, 
It's not like it mattered. So, uh, but other than that, you've seen two of his attacks. The last one is Leah, which wouldn't be that bad. Uh, Rocky kind of gets a bit outclassed here because Fury Cutter is going to annihilate him. Uh, same thing with Chicky. That's got me a little worried there. But uh, both No Arm Boy and Fluffer get the ability to always deal some damage. And in fact, No Arm Boy, uh, it's got Slam, but I'm, I'm feeling fine with Water Gun on this one. This is a rather long confusion, isn't it? I don't think, I don't think Scyther's got defense. Uh, Scyther, yeah. Alright, so... There you go, there goes the confusion. So, uh, let me check Scyther's base stats. Uh, 80 defense, 80 special defense. Okay, you got no hope. Um, and Scyther is really good. Scyther is legitimately, like, a re- a pretty high tier Pokemon. Just for existing. And then... They decided to give him an evolution in this game. They decided, you know what? About Scyther, we need to make him even better. So Scizor, his evolution, which you can't get unless you trade, uh, is remarkably good. Really good. Um, unfortunately, as well, I'm a big fan of Pinsir, and Pinsir gets nothing in this game. Uh, also, Scyther is bug flying, right? Yeah. I could have just been using that the whole time. Ah, Fluffer gets all the money. Whoa, that's a lot of experience. I'm not really too worried about Bugsy. Bugsy seems like a much easier trainer because they don't have, uh, like, a really annoying attack. Like, the momentum building attack Fury Cutter is also one that's really easy to counter if you've got either anything paralyzing or anything... Um... You know, Super Sonic, like, there's so many ways you can break that. Um, I said they buffed it. In Gen 5, they buffed the base power to 20. And then, on top of that, in Gen 6, they buffed it back uh, even more to 40. So now, you only have to use it three times to hit its max power. And, like, it already starts at 40, which means it's at least an okay attack the first time. 80 is a pretty good attack. 160, really good. Um, I guess you're locking yourself into one attack. Maybe combine it with a choice scar, can't you? Get that 50% more. You're out late. <laughs> sure, cool, thanks. So, now this is the important part as well. Uh, you're not safe. <laughs> After you beat Bugsy. The reason why Bugsy is not absolutely gnarly is because Bugsy is not the real mastermind of this whole thing. Ah. Uh... I'm, I'm tossing my head who's actually going to be the uh, best thing to, to go up against. I actually think... Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm thinking of sticking with Babat just for the moment. I know my, my team's getting a bit lopsided and, and stuff, but uh, that's because the moment you step here... Ah, yes. Tell me something. Is it true that Team Rocket has returned? What? You beat them? Ha, <laughs> quit lying. You're not joking? Then let's see how good you are. And he comes at you. He's coming at you. So, Neville. Uh, he's got an interesting team comp this time. So he's got Gasly to start off, which, uh, I mean, I don't think we've not seen any of these Pokemon, but definitely Gasly is an interesting one. Weak to bite, so I'm feeling okay there. But this Gasly's got Lick. Uh, Spite's a bit of a mean attack. Lick is kind of mean, actually, to be honest. Maybe it can't attack. Not today, though. Um, also, Hypnosis may be a bit mean, but I'm feeling pretty okay. Uh, so, then he goes in with Zubat. Now, I got Fluffer. Yeah, we'll not take sending Zubat after Zubat. We've got our specified Zubat sweeper right here. Or really, any sweeper. I just realized as well, Fluffer is about to evolve. Like, 100% after this. First evolution goes to Fluffer, apparently. And there you go. Take him down. Fluffer's level 15! Woo! And now, Cool Lava. Now, Cool Lava is the evolution to Cyndaquil. Um, you only fight him once with the Cyndaquil, and then he's already got it as Cool Lava. And then, yeah, double points for 
if you uh, if he's got Totodile, he's gonna have Croconaw by here, and uh, if he's wait, why does he have Croconaw by now? He shouldn't have Croconaw by now. <laughs> that thing does not evolve at that level. He does, but he really shouldn't. <laughs> well, they were close. Still, uh, this move set's not too rough though. Like, worse, he's got his Amber, which his stats are definitely gonna back up. He's not. He's not like. A pushover. Yeah, you can see I'm spamming water gun. It's, it's not gonna get him. It's not gonna get him. It's very disappointingly not gonna get him. But it's definitely gonna get like a fair bit of him. Uh, do I switch out now? Yeah, actually, you know what? Rocky's got this. Rocky's got this. He can't do anything against Rocky. Except for maybe use a special attack. <laughs> Yeah, Rocky! Get him with your tackle! Oh, he can waste my time, there's that. And I can waste my own time while I'm at it. So, end is special, which means it's... Yeah, legitimately a lot of... Well, that was a crit, but still. Yeah, I expect a Rocky to live more. The worst part is that, like, I, I want to use Rocky as a temporary member, and he's, like, he had his time to shine and that was it. Poor Rocky. Oh well. Uh, yeah, it could be suicidal and coming with Chicky, but I think I'm just going to stick with Fluffer a bit more, because I think that Thundershock is probably going to last. Yeah, it's a party! Have I paralyzed anyone with Thundershock? I don't think I have. Whoa. Oh, that's a bit of a, a oof. So if you get burned, uh, watch out because your attack stat is halved. Um, and you also take damage uh, per turn, but not outside of battle, like poison. But fortunately, Fluffer is special attacking. And his Pokemon is weak. But what? Fluff is evolving! Ooh, 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 ooh. Suddenly the sheep knows how to stand on all fours, and also becomes pink. Flaffy! Now, I love Flaffy. I don't care. People love Marie. Flaffy is the best part of that evolution chain. I'm gonna be strong and wipe out the weak. That goes for Team Rocket too. They act big and tough in a group, but get them alone and they're weak. I hate them all. You stay out of my way, a weakling like you is only a distraction. So what is his motive? Because he's like... Joey! Come on! It's me, Joey! How are you Pokemon doing? My Rotata's doing really angelic! Oh, I almost caught Rotata the other day! Oh, I was so close! See ya! <laughs> it's been, like, exclusively Joey. This is... really odd. Really weird. I got no idea what's going on, man. I got no idea what's going on. So... Sure. Well, now comes the fun part of walking onwards. Uh, so this is gonna be a bit interesting, isn't it? Yeah, this totally is. Um, first of all, let me check uh, my balls. Yep, they're still there. Got it. So we got the ruins of Alf music. Um, but if you walk on a bit, this guy's all like, Oh man, my boss is going to be steaming. The farfetch that cuts trees for charcoal took off on me. I can't go looking for it here in the Ilex Forest. It's too big, dark, and scary for me. You can actually do this before the gym, I think, but there's not really any, like, huge reason. Um, especially when you walk into walls like I do. Um, so this is the part that I'm, like, scratching my head wondering whether I should care. I think I am. Alright, so let's, let's leech life this guy. Um, also, I should really be planning for, like, what on earth is about to, like, come at me in the next gym. I'm trying to think. What is my team right now? Scratch Onyx. It's really just these four. Babat's not going to evolve for a bit. He's, he's still a, a bit off. I'm catching this Oddish, by the way. I don't care. 
You'll see why in like two seconds as well. But let's try and catch this Oddish. There we go. Nice and easy. So Oddish is a really cool Pokemon because he learns a lot of, well, he can learn Cut, and that's the big reason, so we're gonna call him, uh, 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 <laughs> I'll just call him Beta. Hey, Beta. There you go. So watch this, this is the bird, it's the missing Pokemon. <laughs> See ya. So, you have to bait them out. Oh. Sure, cool. Uh, so, apparently the uh, encounter rates in this route, um, so if you're playing on uh, gold at daytime, you'll find uh, Caterpie either like 50% or 60% morning or, or day, uh, Otherwise, you'll find Weedle, and then uh, you'll find uh, the follow-up um, Metapod and Kakuna at like 30%, and then 15%, 5% Paris, and then 5% Zubat. Uh, no Oddish at nighttime. Um, sorry, at, at daytime. When it's nighttime, it suddenly becomes 60% Oddish. It's really bizarre. And then all those Caterpies and Weedles and stuff disappear. Uh, Zubat's more common, maybe, but. It's all oddish. And it's really odd. I guess. Ish. <laughs> uh. Here's one thing I don't like about this game. The wild Pokemon are not particularly good for what you want them to be. Uh, I'm curious which direction I'm supposed to be doing this from. Because you're supposed to get them into a dead end. Oh no, sorry. You're not getting into a dead end. You're getting... You're trying to push them out. And I've kind of taken them around a long way. There we go, so get him. Is it gonna go up? Yeah, okay, so we'll push him up. It's a real simple puzzle, but, you know, change of pace. Uh, and speaking of change in pace, that's exactly what I did this past week when it came to playing uh, things that are just fun games. Uh, regular backlog clearing, uh, and just general fun shenanigans. So I spent the time trying to finish Forza Horizon 3, and I did, and I encountered this strange bug, uh, where the number of jumps and drift zones that I had done were 10 off, and the only way to reset it was to beat a personal best on one of them. Uh, a little odd, but, um, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I get that bird all the way back, and this guy's all like, oh, wow, thanks a whole bunch, my boss's Pokemon won't obey me because I don't have a badge. Oh my gosh, he's a, he's a, he's a villain. He's actually an oddish in disguise. I love corner of my ear, Ghastly. Uh, ah, my Farfetch. She found it for us, kid. Without it, we wouldn't be able to cut trees for charcoal. Thanks, kid. Now, can I thank you? I know. Here, take this. And he gives you HM1. He actually gives you the HM that you need. So that's all cool. That's the cut HM. Teach that to a Pokemon to clear small trees. Of course, you have to have the gym badge from Azalea to use it. That's all cool. Uh, oh, I, I, I've glanced down just to be like, oh, so where did I have to go? So I believe you go back to this house. And you can tell because there's a sign on it. The charcoal kiln. So if you come back in here after that, same guy, he somehow beat her. You chased off Team Rocket and went to Illex Forest alone. That takes guts. I like that. Come train with us. And I'm like, cool, I guess. And then this guy's like, I'm sorry, I got to, forgot to thank you. This is Charcoal I made. And this is, yeah, Charcoal's cool because uh, you equip it onto a Pokemon and they deal 20% more damage if they use the fire type attack. So, always a nice to have. Now let's switch out the party because I'm definitely going to have this uh, Goth Goth HM Slave doing a bit of stuff. Uh, classic Pokemon thing of going, well, you need to be able to use moves outside of battle, and you also need to... I love this, like, save prompt here, by the way, as well, because <laughs> I 
probably demonstrate this. Ruby Sapphire, I love the like pick and you know drag box system. This is a very interesting one because it's just like I don't know the menu is not there for this. Uh, so let's get rid of Rocky. Sorry, Rocky. It actually saves every single time you move something. It's hilarious. You can do the straight, like, just use the deposit mode. This is only there for moving. So I can still just, you know, withdraw and deposit all fine. Now, let's go to the pack. Let's go to TMHM. And I've got Flash. You're not going to need to use Flash for a while. Uh, but you'll definitely need Cut immediately. And fortunately, Oddish can learn it. So, along with Chicky, but I kind of don't want to waste a slot on Cut. Because Cut's not, like, that strong. It's pretty okay, but it's not that good. Uh, other than that, I guess we'll continue on and just make the way through the forest. Um, I feel like No One Boy does need to. I keep hitting move. Uh, No One Boy needs to get a bit of uh, initial exposure, so I'd probably say let's chuck No One Boy at the front. Now, second gen added the best feature of the game, which is you can interact with the cut trees rather than having to use. Actually, I don't know. Did first gen do a thing where you could just talk to the tree? It looks forest shrine. It's in honor of the forest protector. Oh wow, neat. Ah! <laughs> I don't think there's any trainers in here. It's just, it's just a walk, and a very obnoxious one at that because then it would also mean that you'd have to walk uh, through the next route. Not only did I do barely any damage, and he's also got Absorb. Wow. I remember when Noan Boy was like clutching the, the cave, and now Noan Boy is just taking these oddishes. Face value. It's also just Absorb, man. It's not even like that amazingly good an attack. Oh, geez, at this point, sure. Cool. <laughs> okay, so, uh, that egg. Once you walked a bit, look at this boy. Look at this thing. Togepi came out of its egg. So, yeah, let's give, let's give him a name. Let's call him, uh... Let's call him Eggbert. Eggbert. Also, there's a full heal here. Seems like a pretty clear dead end. You know, there's bound to be something there. Also, you yeah, don't want to miss this fella over there. But also a, a stupid potion over here. I'm starting to chuck in some pretty neat items if you're... At least a little inquisitive to the dead ends. Uh, but yeah, no, Forza Horizon 3. Uh... My thoughts on it didn't change from last week, which is the championships get very annoyingly long. I'm not a big fan of how they've laid them all out, and uh, the game is fine. It's harmless, and I like, I really do like having the ability to drive all these cars. There's not much incentive to drive a lot of different kinds of cars, though, considering they do encourage you to upgrade them. It's a bit hard to juggle around, like, lots of cars if you don't, like, force me into different disciplines and have lots of different scenarios. That's something that Gran Turismo does perfectly, and no other game seems to even, like, come close to doing. Um, it's crazy that Gran Turismo gets away with that. Like, it, it not gets away, as in, they manage to implement it, and no one else manages to, like, you know, copy the style well enough. So... Anyways, uh, Headbutt is a real interesting move because uh, it actually allows you to find Pokemon uh, that you couldn't otherwise. Um, and hold on, I'm actually just going to look this up because the thing is that it's a TM. So you can only teach this TM to one guy, but I do believe that there are Pokemon that do learn Headbutt. And as I can see, Slowpoke, uh, Seal, Drowsy, Cubone... Um, Snorlax, and we're good. 
So those ones. Um, none of them are particularly that accessible at the moment, so... If you want to be able to use Headbutt, now's your chance. Um, and from the looks of it, uh, Headbutt lets you get those those bug pug points that... Oh, wait a minute! There's Execute. Oh, I remembered! Yes, I remembered. On my actual run, I actually was... Wait, was I? No, because that was a Pokemon from the, from the last game. I specifically did not want to make a team that had any of the same Pokemon, so I do remember that. But I also do remember really, like, tossing up whether I wanted to execute. That's a pun. That's a pun and a half. Just more dead ends. Uh, but yeah, no, 15% chance to get execute level 10 from a, a headbutt tree. Um, and then there's also, it says headbutt special, and I'm not too sure what it specifically means by that, but... Here we go, let's just see this, uh, outside of battle, a headbutt tree! Oh, wait. Yeah, so all headbuttable trees... Here we go, so... Yep, yeah, okay, so there's headbutt trees, which are specifically, like, these small kinds of trees. Um... So, when a Pokemon uses Headbutt on a tree, a wild Pokemon may drop out of the tree. Depending on the time of day, the Pokemon falls out and may be asleep, which is nice to do it now. Uh, some Pokemon can only be caught by this method. Pineco, Heracross. All Headbuttable trees contain wild Pokemon, but different trees have different chances of creating an encounter after Headbutt is used. The Headbuttable trees in an area also generate their encounters from different sets of Pokemon, depending on whether they have moderate encounter chances or low encounter chances. For example, on Route 44, trees with moderate encounters... Uh, chances may only contain Sparrow or Apon, where trees with high encounter chance may also contain Heracross. The encounter rate and encounter table of each tree depends on the player on the tree's index and the player's trainer ID number. The tree's index is an integer from 0 to 9, which depends on its X and Y coordinates on the map, that is, its distance from the westernmost and northernmost edges, respectively. Specifically, the tree's index is calculated using. Okay, so. Yeah, so x dot product y, or is that multiplication? That's multiply, x times y plus x plus y. Uh, all divided by 5, and then mod 10, uh, and then floor. So, the, so that looks like you get the same tree, uh, the same encounter rate for 5 trees in a row. Uh, so the encounter rate and, rate and tree type depends on the last digit of the trainer's ID. If the tree's index is equal to that ID, the tree is a high encounter tree and the encounter rate is 80%. If the tree's index is one of the next four indices after that ID digit, wrapping back around to zero after nine, the tree is a moderate encounter tree and its encounter rate is 50%. Otherwise, it's a moderate encounter. Why does it say moderate encounter twice? Who knows? And its encounter rate is 10%. Okay, so here's something. And if anyone knows like more about this mechanic, here's my trainer ID. It ends in nine. Uh, so since X and Y are interchangeable in the tree index formula as possible, the fixed one dimension to consider traveling along the other, substituting Z for the fixed axis and N for the axis that will be traversed, formula becomes blah. That shows that if a single row or column of trees is traversed, moving to an adjacent tree increases the index by blah. So where Z is the distance, so that this means the closer a row or column is to the edge, the slower the indices of those trees change. Ah. Uh, other than that, also from the looks, there are two sets. There's actually two sets of of uh, tree spawns. And then there's the moderate encounters and then the high encounters. So, the Pine Co. Pine Co. can appear in a high encounter tree. So I guess and it's a 30% chance. It feels like something you could properly test out. Um, but that does seem like it's a 1 in 10. Uh, I wonder if there's actually a tool online. So Pokemon Gold, tree uh, headbutt Map. I'm pretty sure someone had made a tool of this. There we go. R slash Pokemon, a tool for finding the right headbutt tree. Uh, whether a tree is good, that comes from that, so... Here we go. Is this guy's map correct? Worked on silver. God bless you. Yes, this is... Okay, this is the site. Uh, so I'm gonna drop this site in the chat. Uh, this is an amazing site, and so you'll see it on screen. Check out the site, you basically pop in your trainer ID. Um, actually, even better, 
Why don't I show this instead of just like talking about it, you know? Jeez. Alright. So let, let me see if I can get this. Uh, this is gonna be dangerous territory. Uh, for adding... Oh, wait, no. Wrong, wrong, wrong OBS uh, element. Whoops. Add new window capture. There we go. Uh, show that. Pop it over here. Alright, check this thing out. So what this site does is that you can pop in your trainer number. And you pop in the map. So let's say LX Forest. And this shows you the map as well as all the spots so the the um the blue trees here or the blue spots here are wait which one's the blue spots wait i thought they go up by i don't know point is is that i'm pretty sure oh wait no those are the times of day no are they no. So look at the marks. Okay, star will give rare encounters at eight percent encounter rate. Circle will give normal encounters. A mark will give normal encounters at ten percent. What are these then? What is it indicating with this? Oh, that's gold, silver, crystal. My bad. Okay. So point is, is that that's my encounters if I hit headbutt one of those trees. Uh, now there's two uh, sets of encounters, so we'll see. Uh, that the encounters in gold and silver are the exact same in like many of these spots uh, but then if I go to route 33 now they're different so I really want a Heracross so I'm going to try my best to maybe get a Heracross uh, for now let's go back to the game let's, let's get back into it but yeah no that was a mechanic that I remember looking like right down and going like oh that sounds so cool this is where I do my training. So, by the way, that was it. That's the forest. You just walk through it. There's nothing really too much to it. But yeah, pop out the other side and suddenly... You got a route full of trainers. And quite a bunch of trainers. So, it's your goal to somehow live and get to the other side of the route. Um, fortunately... This guy is rather weak. He doesn't have... Uh, really a chance at all. Ah... Uh, and speaking of not having a chance, uh, that is a terrible segue to uh, another game that I played this week. Um, so on the cusp of playing one racing game, I played another racing game. This one was called Street Racing Syndicate. Uh, this is a game uh, by... Hold on, let me, let me... <laughs> unprofessionally keep looking things up. Uh, it was published by Namco, because it plays the, the little Pac-Man music at the beginning of the game. They definitely plastered their name over it. It is a... developed by Utenix. I don't know what else they've made. Oh, you know it's good when their list of games is... not a table, but instead, uh... just a list of games like that. Oh my gosh, they were the guys who made Big Mother Truckers. They- oh my gosh, I should've clicked in my head. Should've clicked in my head. Ah, oh. They also made, um... A lot of- a lot of other licensed video games, but inevitably the NASCAR games up to and including 2015. Um... Oh, were they the ones who made 007 Racing? Oh my gosh, that actually explains everything now. That does explain everything now. Okay, so, uh, this Street Racing Syndicate game came out, uh, August 2004 on the GameCube and PS2 and Xbox. PC version January the next year. Uh, so that's a rather late game in the console's lifespan. Like, Gran Turismo 4 started coming out. That's my, that's my, I got to mention Gran Turismo twice, two games. Um, but nah, what the game is, is it's a Need for Speed Underground, uh, clone. I guess we'll go with that. Um, specifically Underground 2. They really wanted to go on that. So, you're, you're doing street racing, uh, you're, you're doing, you know, racing against other things, trying to get more cars, trying to get money, uh, and 
It's basically an open world map where they divvy up checkpoints to where you go. Um, sounds pretty standard now, but I guess at the time that was definitely something that was being brand new. And uh, I would still say that uh, Metropolis Street Racer is like the king of getting that done because it also has an identity of its own with the, the stunt system. I'd say much better defined with Project Gotham Racing, but I'll, I'll credit Metropolis Street Racer for what it is. Um, I know, right? I get to, I get to call that one back. Um, ah, oh, perfect. I got an excuse to chuck Chicky out, finally. Um, the game itself has, uh, it advertises 50 licensed cars, which is, it's a fair number. Um, a lot of the cars feel very the same and floaty, uh, though, and also a lot of the cars are different models of the same kind of car, like there's a, you know, a lot of Skylines, a lot of Supras. I think there's really only like 20. At least it's, at least it's not Joey. This is Liz, dressed up my Nidoran. Looks even cuter before. You have to hear this. I battled Wooper the other day. It was easy. I had a type advantage. See ya. You just picked on the local wildlife, bro. <laughs> what is happening? Um, who are we gonna stand out front now that? We'll put Chicky out front. I feel like having just like an evenly level team is probably the most appropriate thing to do right now. Just my, got my Pokemon back from the daycare. Let's see how much stronger it got. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, miss you, Brandon. Please come back. Um. So, that's that. Uh, I don't have too much to say. The tracks felt very, like, they did get repetitive. I don't think any game was really uh, that free from it, except maybe, maybe Metropolis Street Racer. But even then, even then, like, those tracks did get repetitive in Metropolis Street Racer. Metropolis Street Racer is rather, like, large when you think about it as well. Because it's got, like, the three districts of each city as well. So you're not just driving in... Uh, in, in this game's case, three cities. Um, you're actually driving in like nine different areas. I feel like Growl, I could do without. I could do without Growl. Poison Powder is gonna be a fun one. Just because as well, like if you want to catch a Pokemon, deal a status condition to it and you'll you'll get a easier opportunity of catching it. Uh, and more trainers, nice. I'm the best in my class at Pokemon. Are you, really? Sure. Who knows? Got it. The manky business. So, yeah, it it, it was a okay game. Um, it, it, it had it had this silly mechanic. So it still also. Kind of tries to do the kudo system from uh, from Metropolis Street Racer, um, but it decided to add like a limit to the number of kudos you could get in um, in a race to 250. Uh, and then on top of that, if you won a race, you would get 750 kudos from the race. And then all the race events were all championships of three, where it was basically you trying to just get the most kudos um, or, or respect, as they called it. Um, and your best of three, uh, could, uh, respect, uh, is saved. I'll fight this person later, uh, cause I'm gonna watch out. Actually, I'll talk about this for the moment. Uh, so there's a daycare here. The daycare is a absolute staple about the Pokemon franchise now, but, uh, in fact, actually, it was in the first game, but what you can do is that you can leave, uh, not one, but two Pokemon in this game here, and if they are both of the same egg type, and, uh, one's male and one's female, you're actually allowed, or they, they will sometimes drop an egg, and this is called breeding, and this led to a huge, like, you know, this this game got crazy after a bit, because people were like, yo, like, if I breed this with this, and then it'll learn, you know, I have a Pokemon like that with this move, and it's a, it's a rabbit hole, it's just, like, crazy, but on top of that, it means that if you've got a rather rare Pokemon, like your starter Pokemon, for example, you can breed it with another Pokemon, and you'll get, you know, you'll get that starter. So we end up getting some interesting ones where people will actually, like, go out and just make more of a certain kind of Pokemon. Um, I don't have a key use case. I'm gonna really try and watch out this guy. 
because it's night time. He does yell at me. Ah, oh, it's one last trainer. I'm confident in my ability to raise Pokemon. Want to see? No. No. Don't do it. Oh, he's got Psyduck, so what's the worst that can happen? Uh, but yeah, it, it, yeah, it's got that weird system, so, there's also these, uh, um, in-game referred to as girlfriend challenges, uh, and, uh, well, how about let's have this happen first. What? Chicky is evolving? What? <laughs> Chicky with a smug face suddenly now becoming everyone's favorite. Your Chicky evolved into Bayleaf. Oh, good old Bayleaf. Bayleaf's so cool. Oh. Um, and with that as well, I'm in Goldenrod City, aka the city that I was using as the thumbnail backgrounds on YouTube. Hey. There's a few things to do, but I'm just gonna heal and then walk back. Fight like two trainers I didn't fight before. Uh, I don't think there's anything- oh, there is Drowsy in the route. Dr Fun part as well is that, yeah, Drowsy's one of the Pokemon that can learn Headbutt. So, uh, hmm. I'm gonna just go back to Headbutt move as well, just to figure out what level does he get it? 25? That's a- that is a while away, but it's also one that you can probably deal with. Um, so I'm actually gonna put Whooper out front, because I know exactly what this guy comes at you with. Who goes there? What are you up to? So, yeah, if it's nighttime, this officer actually fights you, and he actually will fight you every day, I believe. So, that's gonna be fun on my streams, is that all these, all these officers come at me. This guy's a bit mean as well, he's got a level 17 Growlithe. That guy earlier had like one singular level 13 Psyduck, and this guy's coming at you with a strong one. Growlithe is not a, not a joke, especially when he roars you out and it's probably gonna send in your Bayleaf instead. No, okay, we're fine. Unless he's only going to use that. No, he's using Ember. He is using Ember. He knows his stuff. Oh. I'm being bitten. Whoa. That's a bit of a doozy. Uh, but yeah, the game has, uh, as they refer to, girlfriend challenges. Uh, basically, you have some rather promiscuous women on the streets who are... Like, hey, I'm going to mention a lot of sexual innuendos about your car, and you're going to win a challenge. Whether that challenge be hit the checkpoints, or travel close to this car, or do some stunts, or something like that. You do that, you get the girlfriend. The girlfriend comes up into your garage, uh, to which you are then treated to... I was going to say, a video of them dancing? put it rather generously um it's not it's not actually pornographic but it's like it's that weird like over sexualization of the early 2000s let's have a practice bow um like they're wearing they're wearing like a dress of some kind and they're, they're going to town on this one song um but yeah there's 18 girls in this game and what's worse is that you've got a mechanic that uh so, you can uh, have the girl be your active girlfriend, I guess, and uh, that all it means is that they are the ones who like wave the, you know, the go flags at the beginning of the race and then tell you that you're amazing at the end of a race. If you finish uh, a championship with them, uh, I guess two championships, you unlock two uh, more videos, each of which will have... I don't think I actually had the thing on screen. I think I just... Talk that man. <laughs> I just glanced back and I was like, I'm in preview mode. Did I actually show something on screen when I did that? No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't show the thing on screen, by the way. Uh, here's the here's the thing, by the way. Uh, this is the uh, the map, basically. So it tells you all the spots. Stars are the headbutt trees you want. Circles are just regular trees. Um, you can change the route. You can put in your trainer ID. And it'll tell you all the Pokemon in gold, silver, crystal. You want that. 
I forgot to show that. Nice. Alright, cool. Back to game. Um, so, yeah, each uh, video they progressively wear fewer and fewer until they're definitely in bikini mode. Um, like, it exists, but it's also like, that is the reward of the game. Like, it, it's a rather unrewarding game otherwise. And so that's why it feels quite bizarre to have a game, like, be rather, like, loose with, you know, with, with like, sex appeal like that. It's very odd. Um, and, 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 like, on the one hand as well, like, I can see people, you know, being upset that there's, you know, sex appeal used for the sake of sex appeal. And then on the other hand, I can see people go, oh, like, suck it up, like, you know, you... you you're uncomfortable with it, and it's like... It, it feels strange because it's the reward, and not because, like, it's there for any other reason. Like, one, it's a car game. It's, it's not a, a hot spot to put your, um... <laughs> put your put your sexy content, but... Um, what was a game that I played recently that actually did have sexy things done right? My brain's thinking The Witcher 1, but... At least there's a thematic reason why you, you definitely see, uh... You know, things in The Witcher 1. Guy's been living for so long, he's gotta, you know... That's his character a little bit. Um... Also, this person has a Bulbasaur. Just... They're there. Hopip is not that strong a Pokémon, but... Them using synthesis is definitely just a bit annoying. But yeah, no, Bulbasaur. Here he is. <laughs> I always find this weird, because I'm pretty sure you will not see a Squirtle or a Charmander in this game, but Bulbasaur definitely comes up. Anyways, uh... Yeah, it's... It's a bit weird. Um, so anyway, I mentioned the, the the point system. So you'll gain some some of the respect for doing uh, these girlfriend challenges, and you'll gain some respect for doing uh, the races. You will be so finely cut to unlock the last race event, uh, unless you are absolutely maxing out the the respect you're getting from the the races. Um, and that sounds easy enough, but the hard part is that some of the race events are like, they're like a, a, a drag race. They're like a 20 second drag race. There's not enough distance to like, you know, do all the crazy tricks to, to get your, your um, respect up in the middle of the race. And as I said, it's like you need, uh, you know, you can get up to 250 in a race, but everything's out of 3000 in the end. And eventually, that does really add up. That really does. Like, I, I was playing race events to get, like, 50 more. To get 50 more respect. Like, that was it. Like, tiny amounts. And I had to get 77,000 in the end. It felt so petty. So, like, fine. Like, I don't, I don't really know why. Like, I'm doing all the race events. I'm doing particularly well at them. Why do you force me to, to do this? It's a bit painful. Um, also, just, uh, on the topic of this game, uh, so the other Pokemon in that route, you can definitely find Drowsy, you can find Rattata, uh, Abra, and then a 5% chance for Ditto. And the reason why Ditto is amazing is because if you breed any Pokemon with Ditto, you get the first Pokemon back. Even if it's male, uh, and it does have to be a breedable Pokemon, but, uh, yeah, if you want to basically copy a Pokemon, the Ditto is the best way to do it. And it's right there! That's amazing! So, that's cool. Uh, there's... Goldenrod is a huge place. There's a lot of things in here. Um, are you a trainer? I've got a useful phone number for you. You just get Bill's phone number, why not? Pokemon storage system, you made it! So now you don't have to... well... Actually, I wasn't even paying attention if it said someone's PC or not. There to go. Uh, so now, here's an interesting place. This is the underground entrance, and this actually is its own set of trainers, so... 
There are also some trainers. I'm scared to go down there. Jeez. How about I hold off on that for the moment? Uh, this is your playground. Gokka Rod City Game Corner. Now, uh, I couldn't win in the slots and blew it on card flipping. I got so furious I tossed out my coin case in the underground. Well, can't exactly start here yet, but uh, the gambling from the first game returns with a vengeance. I got into trouble for playing in the basement of the department store. Oh, okay. A little train track. Is that man in black dressed up like a Team Rocket member? How silly! Uh, they built the new radio tower to replace the old creaky one. So this is the radio tower. What do you want, Pest Scram? Alright. Uh, the radio tower is home to a bunch of cool stuff, like this guy right here, who goes, Hi, are you here for the lucky number show? Want me to check the ID numbers of your Pokemon? If you get lucky, you win a prize. This week's ID number is 26416. I don't think I've got a single digit that matches that. That sounds like happy music, and then he just comes back to you and goes, Nah, you don't have a match. Um... Do they have a list of the, the prizes here? Uh... No, I don't, I don't have the list of the IDs. I'm pretty sure you get a Master Ball if you get all five matching, but... Uh, okay. Here comes a uh, fun thing as well. So you can play radio music anywhere as long as you take this quiz. So question number one, can the town map be displayed on a Poke Gear? Poke Gear. That one's pretty easy. Uh, can Nidorina be female only? Yes. Bullseye, question three. Does Kurt the Pokeball Craftsman use Apricorn? They got me on that one. I mean, it's the same questions, but they got me on that one. Did I just misread the question, or did I? do I actually have no idea? So, does Kurt the Pokeball Craftsman Use Apricorn. Who knows? Fresh Magic Magikarp won't learn any TM move. Uh, that one is correct, actually. Yeah. All right, again, here's the final question. Professor Rock's Pokemon Talk is a very popular program. Is Marie the co-host of the show? Ah, come on. <sighs> so, other than that, the game is okay. I I have two praises for it though. Uh, one. It's incredibly cheap, like, for a game, like, for an old game especially, and licensing, like, some music, and at least a number of real cars, I'm surprised that it still costs only four and a half dollars on, like, not on sale on Steam, so, this is that. Um, and, uh, the last one is, uh, it also ran fine. It did run fine. It, it only ran in 4x3 resolutions, but it didn't have any issue running or alt-tabbing or anything, so... That seems okay. Uh, so with the, um... The Poke Gear now, we've got this radio, and you can actually hit up, and you can tune in to... Oak's Pork... Uh, Pokemon. Pokemon Talk Show. Oh, it's Mary with a Y. Oh, okay. It's either maybe seen around Route 34. Rotat is so... so unbearably now. Oak be like Pidgey, maybe sooner out. So, uh, I don't know what the the uh, things can do. I think they actually just tell you that you can find certain Pokemon at certain times. Um, depends on the time of day as well. I think in the morning, uh, it actually talks about uh, the Pokédex that you've gotten as well. You've got this one, uh, Pokemon Music. Um, this one's actually kind of interesting because uh, depending on the day of the week, it's either this like chill music which reduces encounter rates, I know, right? Or, on the other days, it increases the encounter rates, but that means that, yeah, if I really wanted to get through a cave, I'd turn this on, because you can go, see ya, I'm still listening to the music, it'll wear off, I think, when you go to another map, I think, but it's such a good meme, it's like, oh, okay. Uh, and then you got the, the Lucky Channel here, which, uh, I think they just, shout a, a number, they just go, this week's lucky number is 26416. I'll repeat that. This week's lucky... Oh, that's the same... Is it? No. I don't know what that is. But yeah, no, that's just a round number. Uh, there's a lot of white space at the top of the list here. I'm not too sure what that's for. It's just there. 
Yeah, you know, keep going up your lullabies on the radio, man. My Pokemon sleep. Yeah, sure. You can listen to the radio anyway. Tune in. It's a cool mechanic, though. I like it. Uh, can't go all the way up, though. Sorry, authorized personnel will only be on this point. It wasn't that way before. There's something wrong with the director. Strange. Real Jigglypuff as well, right here. So... Yeah, uh, coming here. This is the train station. The train hasn't come in. I know, I'll carry the passengers on my back. That won't work. Yeah, at least he's got ideas, but... Good ideas, not quite. Let's cross the train tracks and keep heading up north for a little bit. Uh, this chick's all like, the man at the house rates your Pokemon names. He can even rename your Pokemon. So, I believe, yeah, this is the guy and he goes, yeah, hello, hello. If your name, if you've named the Pokemon something terrible, change it here. Which is, is neat. Uh, this is the other side of the underground. It travels down the, um, down the road there. There's a gym here. We'll pass that for the moment. Walk into this room and this person's all like, la 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 la, I have plenty of water, my lovely. And you're like, cool, I guess. And I awarded that moving plan on Route 36. It jumped. I think it must be a Pokemon, but it would take someone like Whitney, our gym leader, to beat it. So that's a, that's a big hint, by the way, is that come back here after you beat the gym. Uh, and once while I was battling my Pokemon, couldn't make any moves. Power points or PP of its moves were all gone. Cool story, bro. Sometimes I'll the Pokemon might be able to use its moves. As that happens, heal other Pokemon Center or use an item. Uh, still cool. Got it. Couple more things over here. There's always a big city. Pokemon has loved doing its big city areas. Goldenrod is massive. I don't think I even met this scale in any other game for a while. Unless 5th gen. So, um, this, this person just tells you how cute your Pokemon is. I use an item on my Pokemon, it's really glad. Yeah, cool. Now, all the way down here is this bike shop. It's almost the same layout as the first game. Oh, I moved it, but I can't sell my bicycle. Why is that? Could you ride a bicycle and advertise for me? Really? Great. Give me your name and phone number, and I'll loan you a bicycle. So, yeah, it, just get given a bike here, but my bicycle's first rate. You can ride them anywhere. You can ride them er anywhere. So first of all, I'm going to put on select, because that's always convenient. You can ride them anywhere. Alright. Well, you can equip it out of here. And, uh, yeah. It's basically your RPG style running. You can use it, go around really quick. One last place to check out. We've got the Pokemart here. Um, I actually have not been going into the shops very much. Um, but welcome to the Goldenrod Department Store. The Department Store sells a lot of goodies. Uh, let me see if I can show up a big list of things. So, alright, so the key thing is, uh, this is Trainer's Market. Here we go. We got a lot of the regular items, nothing too fancy here, but just, you know, the goods. Um, it does include revives, so that's always nice and convenient. Um, as well as Pokeballs. I have a lot more money than I expected. Yeah, that's cool. Probably people will talk about things, but I don't think there's anything to um, particularly get until come up here. Here we go. Uh, this guy sells X items. If you're one of those people who uses X items in single player, which I think you might be one of like two people who ever do that, but sure. Uh, this next floor, this guy sells medicine. So these are um, basically they increase the uh, the hidden effort values of your stats. So they do properly buff your stats uh, on your Pokemon. To an extent. Once, once they're very late level, they won't. Uh, this guy sells TMs, uh, so I believe it's Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, Ice Punch, and... Oh, that's Headbutt. Okay, so if you need another Headbutt, there you go. I think they also sell Rock Smash, which has the same uh, deal somewhere. And then uh, this is the place with the, the vending machines. Uh, lemonade is... Is it lemonade or is it fresh water? No, I think it's lemonade. Lemonade is like a classic that people will like, you know, really try and flock to, to getting if they want a good healing item. There's also a basement, which is only accessible via the lift. This is a bit of an interesting room because, uh... 
go all these boxes around. And, uh, yeah, people are, they're blocking the way. Come on, work kids, scoot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's the department store, and I think that's basically it for, like, what is in the city. Apart from, oh, I guess that's the underground bit. Oh, let's check out the underground bit. Uh, so let me see if I can get me a list of things. Here we go. Alright. Actually, I don't think the underground's gonna kick my butt too hard. Uh. Let's chuck, oh. No, yeah, let's chuck no on, boy, at the front. Let's get some levels on him. I definitely know where I'm going. So down the stairs we go. You think it's too spooky, but it's really just a hallway with like four guys in. I got booted out of the game corner. I was trying to cheat using my Pokemon. How do you, like, Game Shark? You put your Shark Pokemon on the slot machine, that's... There's no Genie Pokemon, so... At least I think so. Anyway, you're gonna see some more uh, weird poison type Pokemon down there. Nothing too, too bizarre. Just I guess watch out because I guess some of them we're gonna have um, like Magnemite. And Magnemite always catches people off guard in this game because suddenly it's Steel type. First gen, it's like oh, it's just a regular electric Pokemon, but in this game, it's Steel and it ruins your day at this level because it knows Sonic Boom and it knows it can wreck you. I love how quick this game goes as well, like, I, I, I just find the pacing is really off the charts, like, I'm level 13, and I can walk in and try and fight the third out of eight gyms. You really, like, I think the sixth gym, they don't expect you to really be around, like, late 20s, early 30s? They really don't expect you to be that high level in this game. So, that's what makes it really good fun, just... You know, you do have to really work out your mid-tier teams. You can't just be like, oh, all my Pokemon are going to hit level 60 by the end. It's like, uh, it's, it's fine. I mean, it's cool some of the Pokemon games that do that. I think X and Y was one, and it's like, you get around level 70 in the end. But like this one, it's like, it's, it's low. And so I got to get used to, you know, having, um, you know, like Pokemon that are not going to be weak until like level 20, because that is going to be a lot of the game. No one boy really is not taking, not taking the quick route on this one. I feel like I should have been using Slam to begin with. But now that he's used like Harden twice, it's gonna be a bit strong. Oh, he's so close. And I am disabled. Cool. Well that's okay because I got Slam. Get him with the Slam. The Slam Baroni. At least no one boys getting some levels. So there is that. Edic. Oh, I just realized what am I gonna be dealing with in this next gym? Do I commit with Egbert? So for reference, <laughs> Egbert hatched earlier. Uh Togepi is I think a rather okay Pokemon, but it evolves with um happiness into Togetic. And I'd still say it's okay. I don't I don't know of anything too fancy with Togepi and Togetic. Um, but Togepi is normal type and Togetic is normal flying, I believe. And yeah, I I don't know, I don't have a huge use for, for Togepi. I I can't really think of a, a big one there. Hi there. My Pokemon just got haircuts! <laughs> Whoa! Cool. And then he sends out this thing, you're like, oh my gosh, man, where'd you cut the hair? Chicky! Chicky, what? <laughs> Come on, Chicky. You're not, you're not doing the boo, Chicky. Can't believe it. He cut. What is happening? What's the accuracy on Razor Leaf? Like, Third? What is going on there? Well, that knocked him. Whoa. Oh, 
that's a pretty quick encounter. Aye. I don't particularly have an alternative on this next fight, I think, so... But, yep, here's the coin case, so you gotta fight at least two other people here. Do you consider type alignments in battle? If you know your type advantages, you'll do better in battle. What a helpful tip, says the guy who immediately tries to fight me and ruin my day. McNamonite. So I'm going to be caught in a mild stalemate right now because it's like, well, Razorleaf's going to, you know, hit his- Wow! What is the accuracy on Razorleaf in this game? This is a- It's a 95% accuracy move and I've missed like three times in the past like six uses. Yep, they've never changed it. It's- that's just how the move works. Sure, okay. Uh So to continue on the topic of games playing, uh I've started playing the Ace Attorney trilogy. I don't have too many thoughts about it, but it's definitely more visual novel than I expected, but the writing is rather good and I like the feelings that it gives. So I will give it a very preliminary uh, preliminary it's good, but we'll see. I would like to finish it before I give a full thought. Uh, and speaking of, I'd like to finish I'm also about halfway through Star Tropics. Uh, I played it like once for like an hour. I don't think I particularly got that far. And now it's like, now I'm doing another run of it and like it's really getting to me, but it's also like, man, is this game a jerk when it feels like it? It's a, it's quite jerkish of a game, but it's surprisingly modern. It like. It works really nicely, Star Tropics. There's so many, like, kinds of bits to it. I like how it treats the overworld puzzles, like, rather evenly to the dungeon puzzles. Like, definitely, the dungeons are the parts that you can fail, but the overworld stuff is, um, at least kind of interesting, like, how it contextualizes everything for you. Um, so I got up to chapter five. Uh, I'm not going to say particularly how much or how far I've been going through, but I've not had too much yet. I've not had too much trouble, like, figuring out the puzzles. Because um, I kind of expect some of them now. I, I kind of like, they, they give you a tease early on, and you're like, oh no, they're all going to be like that. And then you try it, and sometimes they are like that. I think you have some rare Pokemon with you. Let me see them. Oh my gosh, jeez. The Dom. Well, I guess like Chicky is pretty good at taking things out, so at least it's that. Wow, lots of lots of experience. Uh, so uh, the the level you should be expecting the gym leader is level. Um, 20 on their strongest, and uh, I'm a little worried because they have a rock type attack, and that's that's like okay, so that rules out uh, Babat straight off the bat, nice, um, and I think that also rules out Fluffer, doesn't it? Because rock is is rock super effective against electric? I think it is, isn't it? It's not actually. Okay. Okay. Alright, we're a bit safe. Still. Still. It's not the kindest of attacks. Um. You can leave this place. Oh, it's chance for a battle downstairs. It's rough down there. You'd better be careful. I appreciate they do warn you about these guys. Uh, you can actually go down this, like, lanky corridor as well. And you'll find that this actually leads to the no entry beyond this point. Well, that's great. That's good fun. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but no, yeah, Star Tropics is a remarkably modern game. The only thing I guess that kind of sucks is at the end of Chapter 4 when you've got to do the puzzle where you dip the, the, uh, the letter that you got with the game in water to get the code 747 to type in, and, uh, 
yeah, thank you Switch version for not including that. You definitely included it on the previous versions, but on the Switch version... Nope. Just cheese it. Just, just guess. It's only a thousand numbers. What's the worst that could happen? Stupid. So, I'll, I'll say that. That's the one that I don't like. Um... Yeah, so here we are at the gambling slot machines. I don't think there's any, like, actual, like, big goodies here. I think you just have to, like, go for it, but... You can see that, uh, there's prizes here. You've got some TMs. Uh, these are, I believe... Let me see if I can find these real quick. Uh... Blizzard, Thunder, and Fire Blast. Incredibly good, uh, TMs. So there's definitely that. Uh, and then this one also, they sell Pokemon. Abra! Maybe worth it if you're having trouble catching Abra, I guess. Ekans, uh, is in this game, and Santru in, um, Silver. I believe I could already catch Santru, so I guess I'm not missing out on anything here, but I don't think you can get Ekans right now, uh, in Silver, so I guess you can get him earlier as well. Uh, and then Dratini, who's pretty good. Um, the cost of these is so high, though. Like, for reference, uh, I think... Uh, one coin is about $20, so that's, what, $42,000 worth of stuff? For the moment, Dratini is definitely well out of reach. Um, but that doesn't stop me from wasting all my money, does it? Let's see if I can burn all my money in one false swoop. Need some game coins? It costs 1000 for 50 coins. You want some? Yeah! And then comes the fun part, trying to figure out which one's got all the, the good odds. So put one coin in, you can only match the center. Put two coins in, you can match, uh, the top rows, and then two, three, and you can do the diagonals. And they really do develop a gambling addiction in this game. They just go in with all the fancy effects. I feel like two is actually the sweet spot, because the diagonals, I don't know, man. <laughs> Legit, these games, they got rated, um... These were G, I think they, re they rated the, the games... I think it was just, like, 4th gen that they actually said, like, oh, gambling is bad. Call me XQC, man. Book, book, book. Except it's bolder, 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 I guess. Dude, those streams were kind of nuts. I, I don't know, like... Add all the context on those, but I'm just like, man, like, bro's playing, like, gambling games on Twitch. He got me down this rabbit hole of going, like, man, is this, like, actually how gambling games, like, properly work? Like, I know that there's stuff like this where it's, like, they tease you that you're almost about to get, you know, triple sevens, and then you don't. And they always, in this one especially, they, they, like, force you into seeing that you got two sevens, and then they just go, ah, but you don't win anything. You didn't win. <laughs> they really do like memeing on me there, do they? That's crazy. Thanks for the follow, Mr. Mega Man Theory. Dude, yeah, if Twitch banned me over playing, like, the Pokemon slot machine, I'm like, bro, like... Ah, uh, um, this is actually a, an interesting, um, point, is that this game, or rather Heart Gold, uh, was, uh, <laughs> start when, oh yeah, exactly, exactly, I, I know the timing, but, you can see that there's two sevens, so it's like, boop, 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 ah, uh, I'm trying to actually time it, because you can see it go by. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, you've got to be kidding me, really? Thanks, game. Appreciate it. I'm seeing- I'm really getting the timing there! Raise money for a wall of it? Aw, oh, dude. <laughs> oh, 
I'm just gonna mash. Oh, okay. I, j I just mash and it's like, oh, we'll give you a pity prize there. Oh, I missed it. I'm just gonna mash. I'm just gonna mash. We'll just see how we go. Is there any, like, actual, like, trying to play it? Kill right in the end. I've actually, I've never pulled Wob off it, like, properly. I'd really love to, like, figure out how to do it. Don't do it. It's too much pain. Oh, cause, like, you're spamming, like... What were you spamming to, um... Uh, like trying to get the wall off it. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, for the for the Cyrillic uh, interpreters in the crowd, uh, I, <laughs> I hope he's saying uh, yes. No, no, it's all good. <laughs> I don't know what on earth happened there. <laughs> Save state! Ah, oh, come on man, you gotta play these games legit though. That's the fun part. Un unless you meant just like, turning off the game in which case, yeah, yeah. Wait, why did I- Wait, I'm sorry, I'm awfully tired today. My brain was just like, Pokemon? Oh yeah, save state? How could you? And it's like, literally the game has the save mechanic that you can use basically all the time between battles. So... There's only one thing that you would actually be like spamming a save state for, and that's if you come across a shiny, I guess. I'm not really losing my money here. I'm back on 50. Got a diagonal, so rip that. You got a shiny yesterday, by the way. Ooh, what'd you get? Oh, I actually bet a three. Whoops, and then lost it all. Gold bat, nice. Am I getting addicted? Who knows. Well, we'll stop there. I've got two more coins than when I started. <laughs> How did that happen? Who knows. Uh, so... In theory, you can go up against the gym. In practice... Ooh, how ready am I? Not particularly. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's at least clear out the other trainers and then we'll see how I go. That's how Mafia works. Yeah, exactly. Alright, so, again. The gym is just an arrangement of platforms. And trainer, of course. There, I believe, are four trainers, just like the last gym. Um, this is the normal type gym, so don't worry about type match uh, matching unless you have a fighting type Pokemon, in which case, preferably use that. But... This is kind of an interesting point where I don't think a lot of people do have a fighting type move to be able to use. So, you gotta do this gym pretty raw. You just gotta go in, have the better Pokemon, and call it a day. Um, fortunately, it's around that point in the game where you've got Pokemon that are evolving. I've got Flaffy, I've got uh, Bayleaf. Um, you're bound to have your starter evolving by about now. So, there's that. Um, I don't think Whoop is going to be ready in time. Not by level 20. Not by level 20. That's not happening. Uh, a question in my head is whether I can get another one. Uh, Armaldo is powerful. Armaldo is powerful, yes. But Maldo's not in this game, though. I can't use him. 
trying to think, what are some other, like, really good Pokemon that I can, like, definitely get by now? I feel like you're, you're limited by the fact you can't go up to the next road, uh, next route, so... In fact, you actually, uh, when they mentioned, uh, a tree that could move, um, earlier, basically you can keep going up north all the way until you meet that one tree that was blocking your path, uh, from the very first town, uh, and it's conveniently in the middle of a three-way intersection, so <laughs> you have to deal with it, but then that opens up the way to go back to the beginning, um, which is really cool. I like it. I'm gonna skip Bad Bad on this one. <laughs> I think I've got my set three. There's actually... Oh, okay. Real talk. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact that I am playing these games exclusively on Mondays, the bug catching contest. I'll, I'll talk more about it, like, when I go up there, um, which may or may not be this stream. We'll see. Um, yeah, Victoria got, got oofed. I'm gonna do a swap with Fluffer. Here we go. Uh, but yeah, in in that place you can get, um, you know, like the the king Pokemon. Now imagine if they allow you to cut on the street. Oh, dude, that'd be that'd be hilarious. Um, but yeah, if you're up there and you're doing the bug catching contest on uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, or Saturdays. Um, you can catch Scythes and Pincers, which are absolutely amazing. Um, they're not particularly that much better um, than maybe some of the other stuff you can get, but, you know, they come at level 13 or 14, but be good. I'd say that's, like, worth investing in if you're stuck for a Pokemon to get. Um, this Meowth, bro, I tell ya. Uh, and then on top of that, you got the route afterwards, and yeah, you can catch Nidoran, um, so you can't do that. Um, you can also get, in my game, Growlithe, and then, uh, you can't get Sudowoodo just for I would love if you could get Sudowoodo before the gym, but can't yet. Um, but yeah, you can you can get uh, Growlithe or Vulpix, depending on if you're playing Gold or Silver, and you can also get uh, Stantler, which I feel like Stantler would be okay. Um, the Growlithe is an interesting one. I don't know how to feel about a Growlithe being there. Uh, I, I mentioned that there were two sets of encounters for the, the headbutt trees. I don't think you're in the ability to get any of those. Um, Effort, Vulpix, and Crystal. Oh, is Vulpix not available in Crystal? Oh, yeah. And the worst part is that Vulpix is the more appropriate one for um, games before the, the special split. What is with Razor Leaf missing as many times as it is? Jeez. Thanks for the follow, Mr. Uh, Plinfish. Yep, Razor Leaf is that kind of attack. It's just not gonna hit when a lot of the time. Jeez. Oh, but it's a crit. It was a crit. You can't condemn it. It was a crit. As a war crime, that's why. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna go around this way. We'll do a heal, and then we'll come back, and then... Yep. Uh, it's really hard to actually see this, but the, sh the gym is shaped like a Clefairy. That's why the platforms look, or the, the barriers look so random. Because it's trying to represent a Pokémon, but... It's not Joey. We're cool. Good evening, it's me, Ralph. Got a man want to battle. It's not going to be a repeat of the last time, I swear. So he's in the same spot. Okay, so this is a fun mechanic. So, me having these people on the phone... They will all ask for a rematch, um, every so often, um, sometime after you do something, so they're not gonna ask, like, the moment you beat them, um, but, uh, when they do that, their Pokémon are stronger, uh, around a certain point, they may not necessarily be, like, scaling to you, but they definitely are stronger, um, unfortunately it's not really convenient to go back to that guy, until, ironically, after this gym, but, Raise Leaf in Gen 1. Ah, yes. Or well, any crit raising moves in Gen 1. Bless their hearts. That's that's the goods. That's the goods. You, what's the what's the harm in anything if you can just don't think I'm a pushover? You know, crit all the time if your base stats higher than 64. 
that class right there. She got a snubble. This is actually like a perfect prep Pokemon here because it's level 18 and it gives you like the kind of feeling it's like, ooh, am I actually the right level to like be taken on this? Um, I think the answer is no, but I'm gonna go in for it anyways. My speed sharply fell. Oh, don't you dare charm me. You got... You got scary face, you got charm, you got a lot of like killer attacks there. Or like stat dropping attacks there. And then you actually attack, and it's not really that much, and also I'm a special attacker, so. Not exactly the best strategy on your end, but sure. Orbit of the Queen of England. Uh, let's. I'm gonna put Noam Boy near the front. I don't think Noam Boy is particularly, like, ripe level to, like, do much, though. That's the problem. This school fairy goes on for a bit. <laughs> She's dead, oh my gosh. Last Brigitte. Uh, this, I guess, is the more endurancy of the trainers. Um, just because they got three level 15 Jigglypuffs. Jigglypuffs not too bad, though. Maybe a bit, a bit tankier than your typical Pokemon, but I don't think uh, they'd really be too, too obnoxious. I love how I'm hitting Slam so many times, but uh, but Water Gun, sorry, Water Gun, uh, um, Razor Leaf is just like nah. Also, hi there, one, one damage. Appreciate it. You gotta love it. Every time it happens, you're like, oh. But at least no one boy is level 15. Maybe I can get up to 16, who knows. But, we got another Jigglypuff. Also, here's the fun thing about this gym. Two of the trainers are, uh, beauties, and beauties have a lot of money available. Uh... <laughs> So, if you're ever, like, in need of, like, healing items or something, like, fight the trainers in this gym, come back out and go, oh, okay, cool. Well, if you're gonna spam defense call, then I actually don't feel too bad using water gun. So... Oh, my eyes are sleepy tired. Wow. I've had some late nights recently, so, uh, perhaps the sleepy tired is a, a sign that this is a great gym checkpoint. Uh... After beating the gym, of course, but I think that would be good. You got you. You guys probably want to see me suffer on a gym. We'll call it. We'll we'll go for the gym. We'll we'll beat the gym leader. Because this is this is the point. This is the um the twenty percent point of not well. That's not the phrase. This is the point where like you know the difficulty really ramps up. Uh, I'd say yeah. This this gym all the. Oh, I was gonna say all the odd number gym leaders, but this one in particular, like, because this got me thinking this, that the gym leaders aren't just people with like slightly higher level Pokemon, but like they've legitimately designed strategies to mess you up in this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cow Cobra. Um, so remember what I said about Bugsy? Uh, yeah, Bugsy early in the stream about like using uh, Fury Cutter and absolutely trying to roll. Uh, Roll yet? Well, literally, there's a move that's gonna literally roll me. And, uh, yeah. That's one that catches a lot of people off, because at least with Fury Cutter, you can be like, oh, it's bug type. It can't do too much. This is rock type. This throws off a lot of people. They come in with their Pidgeotto, or their, um, Zubat. You just get annihilated by that mill tank. Good evening, you're out late. What are you, what are you doing out this late? What are you doing? So, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of a, and milk drink, just as a, just as a meme. So not only can you not like go into it. Also, uh, let me just go to stats. Just want to make a note, male, male, female, but not using them. This is my one saving grace. 
Mail. And yeah, my one saving grace is weak to rock. So... Uh... Because yeah, they got a female mill tank and it knows attract and everyone who knows Pokemon, attract is a killer move that makes your opponent's Pokemon uh, miss... Is it 70% of the time? It's something really obnoxious like that, but only if they're the opposite gender. But yeah, three of my four team members are. So this is either going to be great or horrendous. I did save though, right? I'll do it again. I'll do it again, son. Uh, if it doesn't work out, uh, there's trainers up the north that are pretty okay uh, for training. Although you do run into this interesting point where if you use the trainers up the north to train, then yeah, you, you are fine for this gym, but then when you hit the next gym really soon... Hi, I'm Whitney. Everyone was in the Pokemon, so I got into it too. Pokemon is super cute. You want to battle? I'm warning you, I'm good. This is this is the, the trendy girl right here. Alright, so Whitney's got Clefairy level 18 to start off. Uh, it's got Encore, Double Slap, Mimic, and Metronome. Um, come on. Uh, double, come on. Triple, come on. What are you mimicking? Supersonic? How do you know it? Oh my gosh. Also, Double Slap is a fun translation because it actually was like multiple hand slap in Japanese, so that's why it Double Slap hits more than two times. Super Sonic, thank you! You gotta you got go off it to go back onto it. That's, that's the plan. Alright. Clefairy's... Yeah, no, Clefairy's just bulky. So I'm just using Babat now because I know I'm not gonna have that much of an opportunity to use him later. Uh, when you transfer a champ from Gen 1 and Gen 2, you get Brick Piece. Brick Piece. Uh, also, I guess... Was that Fury Swipes from the Metronome? You just got a different attack? Cool. Um... So I could go in with Chicky. I could, like, try and, you know, get rid of this guy, but... I do have Poison Powder, so I can attempt to... Attrition the heck out of the fight. I could attempt to attrition the heck out of the fight. Cause yeah, the problem with roll is that you you got nothing to like make it miss. So let me get the, the specifics of roll out here. So here comes the mill tank. This is the classic, this is the Pokemon that everyone knows ruins your day. Um so rollout is kind of interesting because when you start using it, you're forced to use it. Um, you are forced to use it for five turns until you miss. Um, and uh, yeah, what what it does is that it's a 30 power attack to start off. Um, ah, we're getting to attract now. Oh, okay. So let me let me get into attract first. Attract, I believe I miss half the time. Do I, do I miss half the time? Yeah. Yeah. This is good. Oh, no. Come. Okay, okay. I, say, I saved a bit. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it's half the time. Half the time I miss. Okay, we got the poison powder. Okay. We're safe in one regard. Um, I half want to get reflect down as well. Alright, so this is, this is the beginning of the end. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, Reflex is going to save me a bit because it'll reduce the amount of damage I take. But yeah, what Rollout does is that every time they attack, uh, the attack does double damage. So, uh, as in twice as more power. Uh, there is no theoretical limit to that damage. So, it starts at 30, then it'll do 60, then it'll do 120, then it'll do 240, and then it'll do 480. And that's a killer attack. Um, you can maybe try and just cheese the damage. Oh, did I say 120? Alright. Sorry, did I not say 120? Um... Yeah, okay. Ch ch oh, oh, does it doesn't limit 120? Uh... 
I don't think it limits. I don't think it limits in in this game. Yeah, you got him. No, I think that's five. I think that's five attacks. So the the mill tank is out of using this kind of stuff. Also, you like how the the poison isn't hitting him. No, 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 it's cool. It's cool. He's done. He's done. Roll out five times. He's got me back into an attract, which is not great, but he's still back into the poison. So as long as he doesn't like spam milk drink, which he is going to, hundred percent. Because that's his AI. That's his AI, so... You think you got him! But then, yeah, he spams Milk Drink, which regains half of his health. And yeah, this infatuation is going to get so in the way. And then he's back to the rollout. What I need to be able to do is deal damage. The, the infatuation gets so in the way. No, one snap and he's dead. That's that's all I need. I just need, like, a regular attack. But instead, not. He's three rollouts in. He's three rollouts in. And I've only got... Oh my gosh, I just realized. Yeah. I got kind of lucky with the infatuations before and then it just wasn't enough. So the best I can do is hope that he misses. Or I should have sent Wooper out earlier, whoops. Cuz... I don't think any of these are gonna... gonna protect it. I think best bet is going with the Super Potion, and then if it's not enough, then... Well, I don't think it's gonna be enough, man. Nah. So that, that's what I mean. The mill tank is mean. The mill tank is mean. Also, I'm gonna lose all my money, so, uh... Yeah, uh... Do -do 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 -do. Yep, nope, nope. <laughs> nope, just, just back at the save, back at the save. The worst part as well is that I have the feeling that I'm just gonna try, try twice. I'm just gonna try it again, I'm gonna absolutely, like, wing it this time. Because I did feel like I got so, like, caught out on luck. Just like that... Like, literally, if I hit any time during any of that second bit of infatuation, smooth sailing. I, uh, he would have died. Supersonic on this cat. I can't use Supersonic on him because he's going to kill me in, in like, one rollout. That, uh, it's not going to work out. I, I know exactly what you mean, by the way. I know exactly what you mean. But Babat is not going to live. Like, in any way. So I can pull off Supersonic once, only for him to roll to Milk Drink again. There's no follow-up. That's my problem. <laughs> I'm not saying that to be, like, adversarial. That's le legit. Like, I cannot pull off Supersonic like that. It's so inconsistent on its own. And he's gonna kill me, like, nigh immediately. So I only get to pull off once, and then... Machop, I don't have Machop, that's my problem. I know you can get Machop, or you could get Machop if I walked all the way back. Um... I guess you could sit Onyx out, if you really wanted to, and just have something bulky. I think Onyx actually probably would survive pretty okay, but... But yeah, I... The... What I need to do is do damage control on this Clefairy, like just try and get this Clefairy out as quick as I can. Thick versus thick? Yeah, maybe. What is happening right now? What is going on? What is... What? <laughs> what? Okay, the luck giveth and the luck taketh, and this was a giveth right there. What just happened? What just happened? Okay, I'll pull off your strat. I'll pull your strat up here. Okay, you ready? So I'm gonna use Supersonic. It's got Stomp, which is just a strong normal attack. Oh, sorry, I can't use Supersonic. You see, that's exactly what I meant. <laughs> Bad Bad is just not strong enough. He can't, he can't, like, handle this. 
Alright, he's gunning in with the rollout, so let's get that poison powder out. It's- it's not... Like, it, it's purely just because... The, um... The Miltech has a, a cow too... Cow is too thick! Exactly. I'm hoping that, uh, this buys me one more turn. It does. Cool. So that- that's my strat. So if I can pull, like, I set up Poison Powder, set up Reflect, because Reflect will at least, like, buy me a little bit of stuff. Um, and then I've got my two, uh, my, my two, uh, body blockers right here to at least take, like, a little bit of, you know, the rough part of Rollout, which is the last two turns here. Egbert must be like, man, you know, I, I, I've got a friendship evolution, and you do this to me. So if you'd rush a cow, it kills you. There's probably a lot of places where that happens. Alright, here comes the no one boy. Uh, let's go on with the slam. Yeah, pure male team, so this is going to be interesting. Militank's not, like, exactly bulky as well. It's only just got lots of HP, doesn't it? Oh, he's going in quick with the next one. I don't think I can switch in, that's my problem. I need a hit. I need one more hit. I need one more hit. Because otherwise he's going to get out of this roll- Oh, he's going to get out of it now, apparently. Okay, give me one more hit. You see? I told you. I told you exactly this. It was either going to cause me problems, or I just get kind of lucky. There's too much luck involved with him. I know- Yeah, Dr Dratini from the game corner is okay. I don't have the patience to win the- the slot machine, and you- You're not gonna have enough money to buy it. But yeah, no, legit, I- I- I told you, I was like, I just need like, a bit of the luck to go my way. On that one. Whitney starts crying, you're like, oh, okay, fine. Oh, you, you made her cry, and she'll stop soon, she always cries when she loses. You come back up to her. Oh. Uh, oh, do you want a badge? Oh yeah, sorry, here's a, here's a plain badge. Level up this thing. Um... This- this thing? Oh, strength outside of battle. It also boosts your Pokemon speed. Oh, you can have this too. Yeah, I mean, I, you could grind, I guess. Uh, so, yes. That's right, Attract was the more annoying of the moves. Not roll out, Attract. So, there's that. Um, and also the boost to the speed stat is really nice with the badge. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I legit, I legit was just like, I just need a little bit of, a little bit of luck to make sure that the, cause you get, you're trying to wing the fact that, like, attract doesn't stop your Pokemon from doing anything and roll out occasionally misses and you, you don't have to suffer the full damage. Um, I think I had a decent strat where I could have lasted with roll out going, but I needed to get past attract. I needed to get attract to stop doing stuff. Um... Because, yeah, like, you can't do anything with it. So, other than that, I'll do one last thing just before I head off for the night, and that is, let's return back to the scene of the crime when the person was like, yo, what's a, what's a funny looking tree like you doing in these parts? Uh, or not like you, but uh, to the north. So if you talk to this person, oh, you're better than Whitney. Do you know about that moving tree? If you wet it with a squirt bottle, it attacks. But since you have some badges, you should be okay. We need feminism power for this goddamn cow. Hey, that's that's the that cow is legit. You know, the star of the show in this game. So anyway, I think that's been a good stream. Uh, that's two gyms in one stream, as well as also mentioning the uh, the joys of the radio. Um, let's go back to here. Uh, technically, <laughs> couldn't beat Whitney first go, done. But that's okay. Um, two goes, I'm not too, not too upset on that one. Um, yeah, lots of stuff in Goldenrod, bit of stuff there, got some evolutions, bound to have some more next time, because what level is, Wooper is getting there, Wooper's on 16, Babat's on 16, Wooper's four levels away, Babat's six levels away. 
So I, I'd say it's going to happen soon. Um, and then we got these two have already evolved. Uh, I don't think they're going to evolve again for a bit, but we'll see. Still, more exciting stuff over the horizon in this game. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyways, with that, I would like to thank you all for watching the stream. And uh, with that, hope you all had a great time watching. Uh, if you are new to my Twitch, I stream every time on Monday. Uh, like this time, basically. So feel free to follow. If you are on YouTube, I upload these directly afterwards. Uh, so please uh, subscribe there. Um, other than that, I give myself a minute at these outros to say thank you for watching and then proceed to have about 20 seconds of things worth to say. So uh, with that, um, I guess what's coming up in the next week? Another new F1 game is coming out soon. So I'm not playing it day one. I'm just going to pick it up when it comes up with the next humble choice, you know? One day. Oh, unless EA is going to be a jerk move. Ah, oh, dang it, EA. Isn't EA doing their E3 thing? Really soon? When is that conference? It's next. It's the week after. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, have a good one, everyone.